Hi, this is Joe Chambers. Thanks for watching Musicians Hall of Fame Backstage Vault Series. The Vault Series is a series of interviews that we shot starting back in 2004, two years before the Musicians Hall of Fame and Museum opened to the public. If you like what you see, please be sure to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. Thanks for watching. George Jones, the possum. He entered my life because of Tammy. I, I, I had produced her, and unbeknownst to, to me, he had fallen in love with her. And he was on another label. And he said, so he called me and said, look, I'm trying to get off this label. I want to do duets with Tammy. And if you, if you will sign me, I, will, will you sign me if I said, sure, of course I'll sign you. And so he finally got off the other label, came over and, and uh, they did duets, got married. Everything was rosy there for, for a while. And then we started uh, finding some good songs for George. He hadn't been selling a lot of records. But uh, a little thing that Bobby Braddock and Curly Puffman wrote called He Stopped Loving Her Today changed all that. So I stayed number one for about two months. Before that, though, my, I mean, The Door, um, The Grand Tour? Yeah, th they were country hits. Th this was like a like a mega thing. This, this, this was a career igniter, you know. I thought you did it again with him when it came out. Because I, I, he was already... I, I, most people considered him already to be the greatest country singer. And, and then in 19, I guess it was 80... Was it 80, 79, oh, I don't and then he, and then he just he got bigger than he ever was. With oh, he became like a cult figure and all that. Everybody liked him then, you know. Okay, here's another one. Um, but this time you had to wrestle the possum on this song. Oh, he hated it. The the recording of this song was a nightmare. Bobby Braddock, Curly Puffman brought me the song over. And I didn't like the way they had the guy dying right up front. I said, can you rewrite it, you know? And uh, so they, I said, I think you're giving it away too quick. So they went back and they brought it. We we had, we had went back and forth haggling about that song for a half dozen times. So finally, they got it the way I thought it should be. Not that I, you know, know it all, but I, I knew what I thought was good. And so I said, Jones, George Jones, this is it for him. And so he came in. And back then, Jones was kind of, he was kind of messed up with his personal life. And, his, and, uh, and so he came in and he, he didn't comment on it one way or the other. You know, I said, look, I'm going to go ahead and make a track. You know, let's figure out your key. And, and, and so he said, well, I, I can sing. So we, we went in there and he, unlike Tammy and unlike Marty Robin, Jones was lazy. Took him forever. He, he wouldn't learn anything unless he just wanted to. You know, it's like trying to push a spaghetti. You know, push a rope along. And so I got his key. Got a real good track. And he was a bit messed up. His throat was messed up, so he couldn't he couldn't sing it. So he left. Went off for, for another month or so doing his doing his thing. Came back in. And one day he came in. His voice was fairly good shape. He said, "Okay, I'm ready to go do that song." He'd been bugging me to do that song, so we went in there. He said, "He said I love you till I die." I said, well, "Wait a minute, that's not the melody." He said, "Yeah, but it's a better melody than what was on that demo." I said, "Yeah, I'm sure Christopher will think so too. That's <laughs> help me make it through the night. You're singing it to help me make it through the night." He said, "Oh, uh, well, it's still a better melody." I said, "Well, yeah, but we got we can't do it." And so finally he came in one day and hooked it. He was in good shape, his voice was in good shape. And that's, that's one of those, you got to, as soon as the first playback, you got to go to your office and put on an overcoat because you're freezing to death in goosebumps. And so I knew we had one to go. Anyway, we that had took to, a long time though, didn't it? took a year from the time they played it to get Jones to sing it. Of all kind of ag, like Aspen and getting him to learn it and, to, and uh, so he came in the office and I said, I want you to hear something. I played him the finished song. 
he said, well, I hope you're right, but I'm saying here and now that nobody will buy that morbid son of a bitch. I said, they may not buy it, Jones, but they're going to get their shot at it next week. So they released it and they just exploded. Did he bet you $100 or something? Yeah, like yeah, he bet me $100. Paid me too. <laughs> and also, the only comment I got from the label itself on the George Jones, he stopped loving it today, is Did you have to put all those violins on there? Yeah. I said, Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>